So I recently finished playing Dragon Quest XI, which is great by the way and you should totally play it. And about halfway through this 100 hour game, I realized I had no idea what the stats did. I mean, I could see them going up when I leveled, and I could figure out the basics like strength adding to damage and deafness probably increasing crit, but how much does it increase crit? Does strength matter more for greatswords versus smaller weapons like daggers? Hendrik has 30 more strength than my luminary. Is that a lot? So I looked up some of Dragon Quest stats and damage formulas to get a little more context, and I discovered that there's a lot that I didn't know. Like, deafness governs running away and not agility, or that when you do a normal attack, all enemy defenses are divided by 4, and then subtracted from your attack bonus divided by 2, which is then multiplied by a random number to determine the damage that you deal. There were different formulas for almost every skill in the game governing how they're affected differently by your stats. I was immersed in these formulas for about half an hour before I realized that in the context of my playthrough, it doesn't really matter. The game isn't hard enough that I need to worry about min-maxing or the particulars of how each skill works. I could never look at my stats again and it wouldn't change much about how I play. And this is true for most RPGs that I've played. When I played through Yakuza Like a Dragon last month, I didn't look at my stats at all and got through the game without a game over. I really couldn't tell you what the stats in that game were even called. So if I don't need to know how stats function or have any deeper context for their values, what's the point? Why do we have them? Stats could be implemented as hidden information, just like the formulas they are used in, or they could also be provided in a more detailed way that provides more context for how the game works. In practice, almost every RPG has a visible stat system that conveys a version of the game's deeper mechanics, but in such a simplified way that players can't make complete sense of it without taking to Google to find out how things work behind the scenes. Well, there's a few reasons why stat systems are so prominent, and a few benefits to stat systems even if the player doesn't really know how they impact gameplay. One of the biggest reasons we have the stat system common in so many turn-based RPGs today is tradition. Turn-based RPGs have evolved greatly, but they still share a lot of qualities with older computer RPGs like Ultima and Wizardry. These games were inspired by pen and paper role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons in turn. The video game RPG genre actually inherits its name from these pen and paper games, so naturally, when you make a video game version of Dungeons and Dragons, you have to carry over its player interface, the character sheet. Since pen and paper games lack the benefit of a computer, stats had to be written out in front of you and combat formulas were kept simple so that you could just do them in your head. The result is that players know exactly how every bonus or penalty affects every action their character takes. Moving the character sheet to a video game still lets players see their stats, but since combat math is done behind the scenes, they lose out on the context of how exactly these numbers influence their performance. The trade-off is that the game can do more complex math than most players are willing to do in their head, so you can add multiplication, division, exponents, whatever to your combat formulas, which is something that you wouldn't do in a pen and paper RPG necessarily. So Ultima was a huge success, influencing genre granddaddies like the original Dragon Quest and proving that players don't necessarily need the same level of detail you get from a pen and paper game when it comes to stats in a video game. You can limit player information and they still feel empowered to make strategic decisions, choose which stats they want to focus on, and generally have a good time adventuring. The very first thing you do in Ultima is choose your stats. Even though you don't know how they work or anything about the world, you can still intuit that if you want to be a warrior, you should raise your strength, and if you want to be a wizard, you should raise your intelligence. Other games went on to imitate Ultima's system of simple to understand stats that hide more complex systems from the player. So that's how we got stats as they exist today. Not much has changed. So what do these systems actually do for us as players? The biggest advantage of simple stat systems is accessibility. Many people are turned off from physical pen and paper games because they don't want to have to learn the math that makes the game work. Games like Ultima streamline the process by just telling you the basics. Strength makes you hit harder, don't worry about the details. One of the strengths of early RPGs like Dragon Quest and Ultima is that the stats are relatively small. In the original Dragon Quest, you start with around 5 strength, and by the time you hit endgame, you'll have around 100. So depending on which growth path you get, you'll be getting 2-7 strength every level. As a result, you feel every strength gain, and it's pretty easy to feel a sense of progress every time you level up. Some modern games like Fire Emblem have kept the approach of small numbers for stats, and it's a strong choice since players are asked to compare characters and choose which ones they want for their army. 
Not to mention, stat gains are actually random in Fire Emblem. Every time you level up, every unit has a chance of gaining every stat, or a chance of gaining no stats, or anything in between. So having easy to understand stats can help players determine when they have a unit they've gotten lucky with, or a unit they've gotten unlucky with and that they're going to have to put on the bench. Games like Ultima and Fire Emblem don't really ask you to do any complex math. All you have to do is compare small numbers, which means that anyone can get started with these games with next to no investment. So there's a lot of advantages in terms of accessibility and simplicity when it comes to stat systems with small comparable numbers. But many RPGs have opted instead to go with much larger stat numbers compared to the Dragon Quest 1s and the Fire Emblems of the world. In my completed file of Dragon Quest XI, my highest stats are in the 600s and my low stats are in the 300s. Stat systems like these are more difficult to understand and tend to have more complicated formulas related to them. In Dragon Quest XI, when you do a normal attack, your strength along with all of your other attack bonuses is cut in half for the calculation. So with that in mind, why not just cut everyone's strength in half and simplify the formula, like Fire Emblem where damage is just strength minus defense? The answer is simple. We gamers love us some big numbers. I mean, the Disgaea series has made an entire franchise about just how much we gamers love big numbers. Max level is 999. So sure, Dragon Quest could half your strength stat and simplify the formula, and you'd do the same damage. But at the same time, if I'm not going to know the formula anyway, it's probably more fun for me to gain lots of stats every level and feel like a big old badass. Most players are never going to look up the damage formula, so using these big stat numbers means Dragon Quest XI can make every level up feel important, even though the game is ultimately making our stats smaller before they see any use. This is another benefit of stat systems. Even if the player doesn't know what the stats do, increasing them still feels like progression. It's the game letting you know that you're getting stronger. You know you're going to do more damage after a level up, even if you don't know by how much or what factors are considered. And that's more exciting than if the game keeps everything behind closed doors. Beyond tradition and progression, there is one more major benefit to stat systems in RPGs. They're great for conveying very basic information about characters. If I give you two characters that look exactly the same, but one of them has high magic and the other has high strength, you'll know which one to give a greatsword and which one to give a staff, even if you don't know exactly what those stats do. In this way, having stats, no matter how simplified, can help you decide who should use what gear, how they should position in battle, and what they excel at as characters. The information that stat systems can provide is especially important in games where you can customize your characters. Stats like strength, agility, and intelligence are all levers that I can play with as a player when I'm building a character. Of course, stats aren't the only way to convey information to players. Factors like visuals and character writing can be just as effective. If there's a character that's big and beefy and always wearing heavy armor, I'm likely to equip them with heavy armor and a melee weapon, even if I don't look at their stats. In many cases, visuals can actually be more impactful than stats. Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones is a good example of this. Early in the game, you get an axe fighter named Garcia, and when he promotes into a better class, he gets to choose between the hero and warrior classes. Garcia's biggest stat problem is his speed, and this is a deficiency that the hero class can fix, but most players go with the warrior class because it's a much better thematic fit for Garcia. Stats are great for guiding players to focus on a character's specific expertise, when players have a big axe man like Garcia, they're likely to give him the bigger axe man class to maximize his strength when it comes time to promote, even though the hero class will increase his damage more since he'll be fast enough to double attack more often with the hero's speed bonus. That said, for a player to know that hero is a better promotion option for Garcia in most cases, they have to know both how speed works and know that hero increases speed more than warrior. So this is an example of how contextless stats can guide players to make suboptimal decisions at times. So what are the takeaways here? Stats are generally a lot more complex than how they are presented to the player, and their primary function is to provide players with a sense of constant progression, rather than providing them with necessarily the most useful information possible. This function is so important that many games inflate the stats that they show to the player before cutting them down behind the scenes to resolve actions like combat. Stats also serve to help show players what a character does and guide a player to equip their characters with the best gear possible in games where that's applicable. So we know what stats do for us, but do we need them? Or are they just a holdover from genre classics that we could do away with and maybe replace with something else? 
Ultimately, stats are just a presentation of information. So even RPGs that don't have stats really do have stats, you just don't get to see them unless you look up the game's mechanics online. That said, you can certainly make an RPG without a traditional stat system. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, for example, lets you increase HP, MP, or badge slots every time you level up. And even though there are a couple stats like power and defense, it's very basic and it's not the focus of the system. Instead, progression comes in the form of unlocking new moves, companions, items, and badges that offer new and exciting abilities. The Alliance Alive has stats for characters, but they're largely static and they're not used to indicate progression. Only HP and MP grow regularly. Instead, you progress by unlocking new abilities on your weapons by using them in battle. The pattern here is that you don't have to give your players constantly increasing stats, but if you want to keep your players engaged, some type of progression goes a long way, especially in these games that can take upwards of 50 to 100 hours. Are there any important aspects of stats that I left out, or any cool statless RPGs I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments, and like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I also stream on Saturdays at 10.30am CST at twitch.tv slash badgervary. I play mostly JRPGs, so give that a look if you're interested, and have yourself an awesome week.